All right, welcome to day 23 of our 30 day yoga therapy challenge. For today's practice, you will need a block, which of course is optional, you can do it without, but if you have one, grab it. I will also need a wall. So with that, let's come up to standing and we're going to start in a gentle wall sit. So lean against your wall, have your block in hand, and then keep leaning against the wall, but take your feet maybe a foot, foot and a half away from the wall. It's gonna depend on how long your legs are. And then we're going to slide down just a tiny bit. So maybe just like an inch or two, let the knees bend, but the knees stay over the ankles. If your knees are going way past your ankles, that's gonna require a lot more effort. And we're gonna hold this for a while. So let's think effortless effort, Slide yourself up and then come down slowly and then pause. Take your block if you have one and bring it between your thighs. Okay, so it looks like this. Let me just reset up again here. And that block is just for extra support. And then feel into the three points of your feet. Find the center of your heels, the base of the big toes and the base of the baby toes. Let your arms hang, your head can rest against the wall and just look straight ahead. Feel the support of your legs. There might be more awareness in the legs because we've got the block connected to the feet. You might notice how the abdomen has naturally engaged without having to draw in or hold the belly in. And then let your breath flow naturally. And if at any point you need to slide up and give yourself a break, please do so. And then once you feel rested, you can slide back down again. If you want to try it without the block, slide yourself up, remove the block and then slide down again. And we just want to see that the knees stay kind of in line with, with the toes or and kind of whatever direction they're facing when you come down, they should stay in that position. Okay. Equal balance in the feet. We'll stay here for a few more breaths. If you want to practice this one on your own, you can hold it for a minute or two minutes. So if you're still with me, Let's slide ourselves up, slide the feet back. So remember, transitions are just as important as you coming in and being in the pose so we don't strain or pull anything. And then we're gonna come just gently away from the wall and stand in your mountain pose and notice what you feel in your mountain pose. Notice how the feet connect. Notice what you feel in your legs, your hips, your upper body. Maybe noting your breath. Now we're gonna come back to the wall, sit again. So we're gonna come against the wall, take the feet away, come down an inch or two, find the three points of the feet. This time we're doing it without the block and we're going to explore um, transferring weight into the right leg. So from the right hip, sense the weight coming down the leg into your foot. As if your foot is pressing down just a little bit more and that left side is de-weighting. Maybe there's some effort coming out of that leg, but the foot's still down. And then come back to balance. And notice what happened to your hips when you came back to balance. Was there a shift? So let's come back to the right side, pressing only as much as one of the hips. Don't hike up. The pelvis doesn't shift or wobble. So if something like that happens, just come back to balance. And then go a little bit softer, a little bit less effort through that right leg and hip. So take your time, find that place. What does it feel like to, is either, it could be a pressing down or it could just be a very subtle awareness that there might be a little bit more pressure in that right foot or in that right leg. And then come back to balance. And then let's explore for the left side. So start by thinking from the left hip, down the leg, into the foot, heel, ball of the foot, equally balanced. 
And then if you need to come back to balance, really pay attention to what's going on in the pelvis. And as you press, also notice what's happening up here. Is there a gripping through the hands or the arms? Are you jamming your tongue up to the roof of your mouth? Is there tension in your neck or your shoulders? As you start to pay attention to those areas and you notice something happening, come back and reset. Go a little bit softer with your legs. And then we can start to go side to side. So we'll come back to center and then let that weight come into the right leg and foot and then back to balance and to the left leg. And explore this at your own pace. You can come up and rest anytime. I'm just gonna turn my orientation to you just in case you're watching me. Um, if regards to like hiking the hip, if you press too much through one side, it might feel like one hip is coming up or you're shifting or something kind of funny is happening. So we want to keep pelvis neutral, upper body relaxed. Let your arms hang. And then we're just taking a little bit of pressure or weight into one leg and then the other. As you start to adapt to this practice, you can go from one side to the other and it might kind of feel like a slinky, but avoid shifting through the pelvis because I just felt myself do that. So I'm just reminding you again, a little bit less. And if in doubt, just come back, reset and then do one leg and then reset and then the other. So let's come back to balance now. And then slide yourself up, step the feet back, and then step away from the wall, standing in your mountain pose. And notice what you feel this time. Ooh, I feel like I grew like three inches. <laughs> Have like an upward energetic whoosh. But maybe you feel more of a downward energy. Maybe you feel more connection into your legs, into your feet. I mean, I certainly feel that, but I also feel a lightness and a lifting in my upper body. My shoulders feel like they're back a little bit more, which is really cool because we weren't even doing anything with our shoulders. So just notice for yourself. It doesn't have to be what I experience. And there's no right or wrong. From here, how are we doing for time? We're at eight. So we're gonna come back down again into the wall sit and we're gonna do some movement. So be really super, super gentle with your wall sit, like maybe even a little bit less than before. And then find the balance in your feet, center of the heel, base of the big toe, base of the baby toe. And we'll tie my hair back. So now we're going to explore a roll down. And we're gonna do this in stages. And if Staying in one stage feels best for you. You don't have to go all the way through this practice. So maybe the wall sit's perfect for you today. Or maybe you start to nod the head. Think about how your skull can kind of rock back and forth on the top of your spine. So you're just gonna do that a couple times. Feeling skull moving on spine. Okay. And then we're gonna rock the head forward and then we're gonna keep going. Vertebrae by vertebrae. Coming, keep rolling down. Arms relaxed. Until you get to about your breastbone. And then we're gonna pause. Check in with your breath. And then we're gonna roll up segment by segment. And then the head comes up last. Pause here. Let's keep the arms and hands relaxed, jaw relaxed, breathing with ease. This is so important as we go through this movement, coming down and coming back up. So keep pausing, keep checking in with yourself, release the tension and then come back to the movement. So we're gonna start with the skull, 
rolling through the neck. The chest coming across the breastbone, pressing the back of your spine towards the wall as we move in towards the solar plexus. So the space where the ribs come together, where they meet in the center. And then we're gonna roll back up, segment by segment, arms relaxed, breathing through the nose, keeping the balance in the feet. And we're gonna start from the skull, rolling back down, segment by segment. This time we're going to, uh, left loop to the belly button, right, right to the top of the hips. And then we're going to roll back up. Keep those arms soft. Jaw relaxed. Breathing through the nose. And then skull. Rolling down segment by segment. Notice if there's a certain part of the back where it feels like it's not involved in the movement, kind of where maybe it skips past. So when you can't roll past your hips anymore, now we're gonna to start to take the pelvis into the movement. So think of your sitting bones sliding up the wall. The position of the legs don't change. Sitting bones are part of the pelvis. Slide those pelvis, sitting bones up the wall. That means your hip points are moving towards your thigh. Let your arms hang down, let the head hang down. Only go as far as is comfortable, as far as your pelvis lets you go. I'm gonna pause here. Ooh, my legs are shaking. <laughs> so now to reverse. This is where it gets really challenging because a common pattern is we wanna lift, we wanna lift up through our upper back or we use our arms. But if that happens, just come back down and rest for a second. And we wanna connect with the pelvis. So find your sitting bones, start to slide the sitting bones back down without bending the knees deeper. Keep the legs. Think of the pelvis. Go slow. Sitting bones sliding down. Keep the neck relaxed. Keep the arms relaxed. Pause if you need to. Sitting bones down. Sitting bones down. Tailbone down. Keep going. Arms relaxed. Breathing through the nose. And then when the pelvis is kind of back to neutral, when you can kind of sense your Sacrum against the wall again. Now we're gonna go up segment by segment, up to the belly button, rolling up to the breastbone, the head still relaxed. Shake up the arms, fingers if you need to. And then we're coming up, feel, feel, feeling the spine maybe against the wall. Coming up bit by bit. Whew. And then all the way up. All right. Try it one more time on your own, starting skull, going down segment by segment. And if you don't go down all the way, that is okay. Can you keep the arms relaxed? Can you keep the feet evenly grounded? Can you keep breathing in and out through the nose? When you get to the pelvis, slide the sitting bones up the wall. When you get to your max place, pause and take a couple breaths. And when you're ready to reverse, start at the pelvis. Let the arms keep hanging. Moving the vertebrae one by one towards the wall, towards the back of the body. Keep the shoulders relaxed, shake the arms out, pause if you need to. And then continue the movement. back up into your chair pose. Let's just pause for a moment, find the three points of the feet again. Notice if something is shifted. If it has, that's okay. We're just bringing awareness. We're noticing how our body responds to this type of movement. The legs might feel a little fatigued. You might start to get a little bit shaky. That's okay. And then when you, we are ready from the back of your legs, Lift, slide yourself up, take the feet back, and then step away from the wall, standing in your mountain pose, and notice what you feel. Nice. 
certainly feel more grounded and taller. Okay. If you're feeling good here, turn and stand sideways to the wall and get it fairly close. So your shoulders like not quite touching, mountain pose. Take your outside arm, bring it up and over to touch the wall. I think we did this before with a block, so you can always use your block, bring the arm up. I realize you can't see me here. Press the block into the wall. Press the block into the wall. Get a little bit of a side bend action from your shoulder all the way down to your hip. And then we'll turn and do the other side. Starting with your mountain pose, find a balance in your feet. Saddle first. Outside arm comes up, holding onto one end of the block, and you press the other edge of the block into the wall. Beautiful, and then release. Okay, so that is today's practice. I am going to keep going. I want to share with you um, a mountain, or not mountain pose, pyramid pose using the block. And then, so you can stick around for that if you want to, or you can continue on with your day. Okay, so if you're gonna stay with me for mountain pose, we're gonna hold on to the block, and we're gonna come back up to standing in our mountain pose, finding the equal balance in our feet. Next, we're going to shift the weight into the left leg without hiking our hip. We're going to take a small step forward with the right foot. So if I turn to my side, you can notice that's just a small step. I have, my pelvis hasn't tilted. I haven't done anything up here. Okay, small step forward with the right foot and then let the foot stay on the floor. Legs are straight. Next, we're going, and you can always take your stance a little bit wider if you feel unbalanced. So go a little bit wider if you need to. Then we're going to take the short end of the block and we're going to bring it right up against your pubic bone. And then we've got our hip joints on either side. So to explore this version of our pyramid pose, we're going to press the block against the pubic bone where it's going to tilt our pelvis forward, and then coming back up. So the action is pelvis moving on leg bones. And the block is just a really nice kind of, gives us some feedback about our movement. You can kind of feel your pelvis moving against the block, and then back up. So pubic bone moves back. You might sense your tailbone lifting and then pause. So we're keeping a neutral spine, our back has an arch, back hasn't rounded. If it has, go a little bit smaller with your movement. And then press the pubic bone into the block, lifting the pubic bone to come back to neutral. So explore this a few times on the side and see what you notice. If any questions come up for you, don't hesitate to send me an email or a text message. And then when you find that appropriate distance that works for you, where the back feels good, then we can hold. And maybe, maybe, bring the block right up against your chest, kind of right up against your breastbone, and wrap one arm around, and then the other arm around, holding onto your upper arms. And then we're gonna keep the legs and pelvis as they are. And then turn your upper body. You're gonna turn the block towards that front leg. So we're exploring a little bit of a twist and this helps us kind of find that 3D motion. So we're not side bending or hip hiking. And then maybe hold that twist for a couple breaths. Only if it feels good. So I'm gonna turn the other way so you can see. And bring the body back to center. So we're still hinged over. And bring the block back down to the pubic bone. Press the pubic bone into the block to come back up. 
and then you can step that front, that right leg back. And we'll do the same thing on the left side. From mountain pose, left leg, small step forward, block against the pubic bone, and then press the block to find that kind of rocking motion of the pelvis or the hinging motion. If you're to bring your fingertips, if you don't have a block, if you bring your fingertips right into the front of your hip creases, you can find that same kind of movement. So the angle then between your hip points and your legs come closer together. So as you hinge, it's like your fingertips are sinking in deeper into your, your hip creases. Yeah, so that's where our leg bones come into the hip socket right in here. And then the outside of our hip bone is on the outside here. So once you find a place that you can hinge to without feeling it in your back, you can hold. If you're using a block, you can hug the block right against your breastbone and explore rotating the upper body towards that front leg, only going as far as that right hip doesn't follow. So if the, hip, if, if the hips are twisting, then you've just gone too far and just set up again. I know there's a lot, of, I'm asking you to pay attention to a lot of things. So if I'm giving you too much, just pick one thing and focus on that for today. And then you can bank the rest of it for another time. Okay, and bring your twist back to center. Use the block against the pelt. Pubic bone or fingertips in the hip crease. Tailbone down, pubic bone up. Step forward and release. And then just notice how you feel. Okay. From here, you can either stay in standing or you can come down onto your knees. I'm going to do it on my knees just so you can see me better in the camera. The toes can be tucked under or pointed back, whatever works for you. Let your arms hang. And we're going to explore a little bit of a back bend here. So we're just going to keep breathing with ease and slowly start to extend your spine. So right from the bottom, evenly, all the way up to the base of your skull. We're only going to arch back as far as you can keep breathing with ease. There isn't any increase in pain. You might feel some stretch through the front of your body, through the chest, the ribs or the abdomen. If you need something under your knees, come out and pop a blanket under your knees. And then come back to neutral. And try this a couple of times. All right. Come back up to standing if you're on your knees. Feel yourself in standing. Hmm. All right. So I hope you had fun and I look forward to joining you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.